In the late 1600s, the Swiss mathematician Jacob Bernoulli explored the idea of compound interest. He asked, if I invest one unit of money at 100% annual interest, what happens if the interest is compounded more than once a year? With one compounding, one times one plus one equals two. With two compoundings, one times one plus 0 0.5 squared equals 2.25. Four times per year, one times one plus 0 0.25 to the fourth power equals 2.44. 12 times, one times one plus 0 0.0833 to the 12th power is approximately 2.613. What if we compound endlessly, more and more frequently, without limit? Bernoulli wrote this expression. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the power of n. This limit approaches 2.71828. He didn't name the number, and he didn't know how profound it would be. But this was the birth of E, a number born from the logic of continuous growth. What Bernoulli found was only the beginning. His result planted the seed of what would become the exponential function. He didn't yet grasp the full structure, but his work hinted at a pattern that would later revolutionize calculus and model nature's behavior. In the early 1700s, the Swiss genius Leonhard Euler picked up where Bernoulli left off. He recognized the pattern wasn't just financial, it was universal. Euler gave the number a name, E, and defined it formally. E equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of one over n factorial. That means 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial and so on. Euler also showed something astonishing. The function e to the x is the only function that is its own derivative. The derivative of e to the x with respect to x is e to the x. This rare and elegant property placed e at the center of calculus. Euler had elevated e from a curiosity into a fundamental constant of mathematics. From there, E left the world of banking and entered the world of science. It became central in modeling, population growth, radioactive decay, the flow of heat, and even wave propagation. In every system where something changes in proportion to itself, E shows up, silently shaping reality. This concludes part one. From Bernoulli's interest tables to Euler's infinite series, E transformed from a hidden limit into a cornerstone of mathematics. But the journey is not over. In part two, we'll explore how mathematicians proved E is irrational and even transcendental. In part one, we witnessed how Leonhard Euler brought the number E to life, emerging from compound interest and evolving into a central concept in calculus and infinite series. But deeper questions remained. Can E be expressed as a simple fraction? And more intriguingly, is it governed by the rules of algebra? Decades after Euler's work in the year 1768, a mathematician named Johann Heinrich Lambert sought an answer. He wanted to know if E could be written as a ratio of two integers, something like a over B. Lambert's result was groundbreaking. E is not a rational number. In formal terms, E does not belong to the set of rational numbers. What does that mean? A number is irrational if it cannot be written as a fraction, and its decimal goes on forever without repeating. Using advanced mathematics involving continued fractions and properties of logarithms, Lambert proved that E, like the square root of 2, has a decimal expansion that never settles down. E was no longer just mysterious. It was mathematically untamable. But a deeper question lingered. Could E be the solution to any algebraic equation, something like a times x to the power of n plus b times x to the power of n minus 1 and so on equals 0? If not, E would be something even rarer, transcendental, a number that doesn't just escape fractions. It escapes all of algebra. In the year 1873, French mathematician Charles Hermit proved that E is transcendental. In other words, E does not satisfy any algebraic equation with rational coefficients. It cannot be built from roots, powers, or algebraic expressions. Hermit had shown that E lies beyond algebra itself, a number completely outside the classical universe of equations. This wasn't just a mathematical curiosity. 
Hermit's proof mattered because it set the boundary between what can be constructed and what lies forever beyond reach. He used tools like modified Taylor series, carefully built analytic functions, and logical contradictions. For the first time in history, a known constant, E, had been proven transcendental. It was a triumph for number theory. And why does this matter? Because transcendence shapes the very core of mathematics and logic. In algebra, it defines the limits of symbolic computation. In cryptography, it underpins methods that rely on unpredictability. And in mathematical logic, it questions what's even possible to construct. Thanks to Hermite, A became more than just a number. It became a symbol of mathematical freedom. Inspired by this, another mathematician, Ferdinand von Lindemann, proved in 1882 that pi is also transcendental. But E led the way. It was the first number ever shown, rigorously and formally, to transcend the reach of algebra. So now, with Lambert's proof of irrationality and Hermit's proof of transcendence, E has become something untouchable. No longer just elegant or strange, it is now beyond reach. From finance to infinite series, and now to ultimate mathematical independence, the journey of E has reached a realm where no equation can trap it. In part three, we'll see how this untouchable number powers modern science, from statistics to artificial intelligence, and shapes the very code of our digital world. After centuries of mathematical exploration, the number E evolved beyond its origins. Once born from compound interest and rigorously proven to be irrational and transcendental, E found new life in the digital era. It became an engine behind modern science, quietly powering the inner workings of probability, statistics, and information theory. In probability, E plays a central role in formulas like the Poisson distribution, where it models the likelihood of rare events such as radioactive decay, and in the iconic normal distribution, where exponential decay describes how values naturally cluster around the mean. This same property, a graceful, symmetric falloff, is why E fits so naturally into the architecture of randomness. In the 1940s, Claude Shannon placed E at the center of communication theory by defining entropy using logarithms with base E. This concept measures uncertainty, tells us how surprising a message is, and guides everything from file compression to secure digital communication. Without fanfare, E became the quiet mathematics behind how we store, share, and protect information. In machine learning and artificial intelligence, E shows up even more vividly. The sigmoid function, 1 divided by 1 plus E to the negative x, allows machines to make binary decisions with probabilities. In multi-class classification problems, the softmax function turns raw prediction scores into a smooth probability distribution using e to the power of each input, divided by the sum of all such exponentials. This smooth mapping is what allows neural networks to choose among many options with confidence. And to train these models, we use cross-entropy loss, which again draws from Shannon's entropy, showing how much the model's prediction diverges from the truth. Meanwhile, in finance and population dynamics, E continues to model continuous change. Whether it's continuous compound interest, amount equals principal times E to the power of rate times time, or exponential growth and decay, where the system evolves as a to the power of K times time, E always shows up where change flows smoothly. From biology to physics to economics, wherever growth or decay happens naturally, E is there. Why? Because E describes change itself. It is the only number that appears whenever a system evolves proportionally to its current state, whether growing, shrinking, or oscillating. That's why it underpins not just abstract theory, but living systems and intelligent algorithms alike. E models the heartbeat of continuous systems, the rise and fall of populations, the spread of heat, the transformation of data. From 17th century financial ledgers to the circuits of 21st century AI, Euler's number remains timeless. It is irrational, transcendental, and omnipresent. It lives in code, flows through formulas, and whispers in the logic of the universe. More than a constant, E is the very shape of transformation, 
a number beyond numbers, a mathematical soul that powers our modern world.